JCPenney Saturday is starting Friday, and now you can get great deals for your home, too. Hurry in to JCPenney this Friday and Saturday to find select Home Expressions 100% cotton solid bath towels for only $3. Plus, get an extra 20% off with your JCPenney credit card and coupon on select apparel, home, shoes, fine jewelry, and accessories in-store and at jcp.com. Or save an extra 15% off with any other form of payment. Now that's getting your pennies worth. JCPenney. Prices sell 826 to 27 coupon required. Sell 824 to 828. Some exclusions apply. 20% off for a subject credit approval. Check jcp.com or newspaper for coupon details. Log Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another conversation. Today we have Beverly East. She's worked in the private and public sector of personal management for over 14 years. She was introduced to graphology in 1987, where she um, employed by a recruitment consultancy. This high successful company used graphology as a primary tool for client selection and recruitment. Ms. East trained intensely for four years and was qualified in the world's foremost institute of graphology, based in Chicago, Illinois. Hey, hey. <laughs> she established strokes and slants in Washington, D.C. in 1989 and in London, England in 1991. Over the past 26 years, Beverly has built an extensive clientele that includes the Washington Court Hotel in the United States. In Europe, she consults with Queen Elizabeth Foundation for Disabled People, the London Taxi Finance Company, and Educare Recruitment Consultancy. She studied and trained both in the UK and the US and qualified an apprentice with the world-renowned document examiner, Felix Klein of New York. Eve has lectured at major universities such as Bowie State and other in educational institutions. She has been featured in print media such as the Washington Post, the Guardian in the UK, participated in a research and reliability study for the British Institute of Graphologists. Ms. East examined may, um, may well and testimony frauds and won consist consistently in the Supreme Court in Kingston, Jamaica, the High Court of Trinidad and Tobago, and Washington, D.C. courts. One significant examination resulted in a 4.5 million win for a D.C. lawyer for Ross Bell and Dixon in authenticating the 18th century explorer Alfred Wallace. 1,700 items collection for the Smithsonian Museum. My uh, my co-host Chris Daly will let you know some more about her. So take it away, Chris. Thanks, Denise. And Beverly, welcome to our conversation. Thank you for having me. Great. Good to have you. Um, Denise has given, you such a, uh, given us such an extensive overview of your background, but tonight we're going to be talking about one of your real passions, and your writing passion. Uh, but just to get people to, to get to know you a little more, uh, let's talk a little about your Jamaican roots. Give us a, a, a sense of what that's all about. Well, I was born in Jamaica. <laughs> I moved to England at a very young age. I always say I was my mother's accessory because you had no say in it back then, whether you stay or you go. <laughs> okay. uh, you just go with your parents. And I've been living in the United States since 1987, and I just became an American citizen two weeks ago. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. um, well, but I have strong Jamaican roots in terms of both my parents are Jamaican. My father was a Garveyite. So no matter where I've lived or where I've been, um, my my soul is my Jamaican roots. Amen. I know you were recently honored uh, as one of the honorees of the Institute of Caribbean Studies to recognize some of your accomplishments. 
tell us about a little about this award and what it means to you. Uh, the award, I was actually for, everybody thought the award, when I was inviting people, thought the award was about my writing, but it wasn't. It was for my work as a handwriting expert. I am the only woman of color qualified and practicing in both areas of handwriting expertise. Most people work in one or the other, but being a Jamaican high achiever, I ended up working in both, and I love both areas of handwriting expertise. So that that's what Wonderful. I got the award for. That's what I got the award for. Well, certainly, our congratulations to you. Thank you. Yeah, as I said, to to be a handwriting expert, you have the mind of a detective, but you also have the pen of an author, and you've written this riveting um, book, Reaper of Souls. And it's personal and it's riveting. How did Thank you muster you. the courage to deliver such an excellent piece of work? Uh, well, it took me nearly 25 years. So I don't know if I mustered it up. I just kept plodding along for 25 okay. years. <laughs> um, I didn't know. Because I grew up in England, I didn't really know much about Jamaica. So I would run back and forth in my summertime to go to Jamaica to do research and it wasn't until I committed myself and moved to Jamaica and lived there that I was able to really finish the book. And 9-11 mm -hmm. really shook me up that there were things unfinished and I need to finish it because I didn't know how long my life on this earth was going to be. So I wanted to make sure that was one of the things that I completed in my lifetime. Boy, we know it was, it's been such an emotional journey for you. Take us back to the, the moment of discovery of your family's fate and um, what gave you the determination that this needed to be chronicled. Well, I didn't know. My father had lost 14, because for, for, maybe some of your listeners are not, not even sure what we're talking yeah, give about. Us some background. But I'm talking yeah. about the 1957 Kendall crash. A train crashed in Jamaica on the 1st of September, killing over 250 people. And my father had lost 14 members of his family on that train. Father, mother, uncles, aunts, cousins. My father would have been on the train had he not already gone to London to join my mother. So that's the background of the story. I lived in the house with my father, and he never spoke of it. And it wasn't until I was mm. 18 that a cousin came to stay with us and told me about the Kendall crash. So from then, 18, I was very curious. I wanted to know more. My father didn't want to talk about it. It was still painful for him. So I just started doing my own research. And then, as I said, it wasn't until I moved to Jamaica um, in 2003 that I began to really focus on finding survivors, going to the National Library, and we have the most amazing archival system in Jamaica. People always think that, you know, Jamaica's a little bit backward in some areas, but honestly, they were the most helpful people ever to work with over the period of time. And even when I finished, I thought I'd finished the book, the day I left and said goodbye, mm -hmm. I got a call in the afternoon saying that a lady from England had just walked in the library bringing in the ticket that she had from the train crash. How amazing is that? And so so the, the ticket went into the book because, I, you know, there was nothing archived, but she felt she needed to bring it, and I became quite close to that woman. Um, so it was not an easy journey. I cried a lot. I realized that I was in over my head for a long time, and but I just kept going. And I'm happy to say that I have helped so many people um, put a part of this horrific night behind them, closure, because mm -hmm. they didn't know. Some of the information that's in the book wasn't available to them. So somebody once said to me, if I don't do anything else in my lifetime, I've done it. So <laughs> I still think there's more for me to do, but that is... Uh, that was a great compliment when I got that message from a friend. 
That's great. So they might have just seen maybe the Gleaner's um, story, and that's all they Yeah, most people just saw the Gleaner's story. Yeah, most people read or Mm -hmm. did not read. A lot of people... One of the things, Chris, that I wanted to do with this book, I wanted people to read it from start to finish. I didn't want them to think it was all going to be so horrific that they wouldn't be able to get through it. Because people say, oh, I don't want to read that. It's going to be too sad. But there is so much triumph, there is so much joy, there is so much love that comes through the pages of the book. And to me that was equally as important because we were those people before the tragedy. You know, we were people Mm -hmm. with dreams and hopes and triumphs and love and joy. So I wanted to capture that in the book as well. And um, I'm happy to say that the book is now with a film director, so maybe right. in a couple of years we will have it as a movie. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> this is great news. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how did you, you know, when you started, you 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 are the that's uh, out of, into adulthood, then you are making this large decision. How did your dad take to the journey that you um, decide to embark on? Well, my father had died. By the time I had really started yeah. taking the journey to write it seriously, my father had mm-hmm. already died. My father died okay. quite young. He died in 1978. He was only 64. Um, so, yes, yeah, so he is not, wasn't present of any of that, but his sister is alive and other family members are alive, and so they have been very proud of me and what I have accomplished. And I still think, I feel his presence a lot of time. So I still think he's smiling down at me and happy that I have, you know, done this work for everybody, not just for me, but for everybody. Right. You say it's been a 25-year journey. Um, Mm -hmm. At at any point you said, gee, this is not worth it, I'm going to put it aside or... Oh, yes, I did put it aside. You did? Ten years in, (laughs) ten years in, I put it aside and I wrote Finding Mr. Right. I wrote the handwriting book. Ah. Reaper of Souls is my second book, but I, I put it aside and I wrote Finding Mr. Right because I was already a handwriting expert and I knew what I was writing about. I was still muddling my way through the, you know, through the Jamaican history archives and not making sense of how I was going to make the book resonate with everybody. So I put it aside. I worked for four years on Finding Mr. Right. It became a bestseller. And then I woke up one morning and I thought, I'm an author. I need to get back to the other book. <laughs> okay. and, so, <laughs> so I, and it did give me some confidence. Um, and, yeah, so I went back to Reaper of Souls. It was called something else at the time. And um, I just plodded along and continued. And then what made it quite, as it was coming up to the 50th anniversary, I just felt I had to finish it ready for the 50th anniversary of the Kendall Crash, which was in 2007. Right. So, yeah, the drivenness that, that, that to get you there. Yeah, yeah. There was no turning back. There was no turning back. I cried a lot of nights. I didn't sleep a lot of nights. I'd get up in the middle of the night. I never turned off the computer in four years because I would get up in the middle of the night and write. Things would come to me. I'd be in the middle of cooking dinner and leave the dinner and go and cook. I would be be having dinner with somebody and I'd be bored and I would excuse myself and said, oh, you know, make a little, tell a little white lie. My son is sick. I gotta go, and <laughs> go, and come home and write. You know. Mm. So all those people out there that are listening, that I may have walked away and left you. Now you know the real reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we're thankful that you had that kind of determination and focus. So in 2007, it was launched. How was it received? It was so well received in Jamaica. I think it's one of those stories that was never really told properly or people had questions. I mean, I we sold like 5,000 books without any advertising. I we had a we had a a launch obviously in Jamaica. We had a candlelight service in Kendall. 
Um, and then the church service, the church that had originally arranged the train um, out in that my grandparents belonged to, they did a service. And at the time, I was working for the radio station, RJR, so they, they um, what do you call it? Uh, they connected the service, I can't remember the right word, broadcasted, broadcasted the service so the entire Jamaica could hear. So sometimes I go into a bookstore and I can't see my book and the bookstore owner always says, I don't have to worry about the book. The book just sells itself. People come in, they ask for, they don't know the title of the book, they don't know the name of the author, they just know it's the Kendall story. And she says the book just mm. sells by itself, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's it's done extremely well. I'm proud of that work, I'm really proud of that work. And I've written something else since then. I've written another book since then um, about okay. my childhood, my childhood, childhood. growing up between... We'll... Yeah, we'll Sorry. get to that in a minute. But yeah, okay. Let, okay. before we get to your, your newest book, I want to talk about, I know you had some um, initiative also, you know, to to have some kind of memorial because memorials are sacred symbols to honor our loved ones. And I know you had some initiative around that. Can you give us an update on how that's going? I have absolutely nothing to add to that right now. Um, it all takes money. And I find a lot of people come forward, yes, yes, we're going to help you, we're going to do this, and then nothing happens. And uh, I have been really busy running my company in the area of handwriting, and I haven't really been able to put as much energy into the fundraising of the memorial. It's not that it's never going to happen, but um, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm doing it alone, it, it has been a long journey. And people who have made me promises have not honor those promises but it's temporary okay good well, maybe by if, maybe if somebody by the is next listening yes <laughs> right if somebody now is listening what w how would they go about supporting this initiative for memorial well the, first of all they'd have to be genuine because a lot of people come forward and they're not really genuine so okay. uh, they would have to be genuine they'd have to decide what exactly they would want to donate whether it's money whether it's time whether it's building supplies, a specific area um, of how they would help. Um, and they can reach me through my website, through my email address. Good. All right. Well, we want to give folks this uh, whet the appetite. Could you share a brief passage of that's in the book just to give them a sense of that and uh, why it's meaningful to you? Okay, I'm going to read Reaper of Souls, chapter 13, two pages. And I'm going to read the part of, um, when I was writing the book, there was a lot of ghost stories. So I created my own ghost story in within my story. It was a chilly, dark morning. Even the sun had overslept. A gentle breeze swept across my face and I squinted to adjust to the morning light. The entire house was quiet. I looked at the clock and its hands told me that half the day had gone. I jumped out of bed, half-dressed, pulling my robe around my shoulders. I ran down to the hallway. There was no smell of fried planting or dumplings coming from the kitchen, no pots and pans clanging, no water running in the sink, and no sign or sound of Miss Ruby either in the kitchen or in the yard. I peeped around her bedroom window and there she was, fast asleep and slumped forward in her chair, her chin in her chest and her rifle in hand. Miss Ruby, Miss Ruby, was she dead? She stirred just a little, her large frame shifting in the chair, but she did not wake up. I ran down the hallway to Don Donovan's room. The door was closed, and without knocking, I pushed the door open. The room was dark and snuffy, stuffy, with a smell of stale carnality. Donovan never closed either the window shutters nor his door at night and slept with all the lights on. My cousin lay in deep sleep, wrapped up in the arms of a woman. Her face covered in the mass of thick black hair. It was the happiest I'd seen him. I tiptoed out of the room, holding my surprise until I got back to the safety of my own. Donovan's new love came often, too often. She disrupted his lessons and showed up unannounced. He never seemed to mind, but it annoyed me to no end. 
She said her name was Lucy. She wore a lost look on her face. Her deep set grey eyes stared at you as if she'd seen the world four times over. She never smiled or frowned but stopped but stood looking at me expressionlessly. She was pigeon chested and had no hips. Her legs seemed to surpass her waist. When she was alone with Donovan I watched her giggling, singing and whispering to him. Her black hair fell loosely below her waist. She wore the same pair of shoes every day but a different frock style of all shades of blue. But no attempt was ever made to match the striking turquoise shoes on her feet. From head to toe she was decorated in jewellery, beads of more than one crucifix hung around her neck, earrings clipped on every earlobe, fingers on ev- rings on every finger, and she jingled with every move she made. I heard her one day, she, she heard me one day mumbling about her strangeness. All she said to me was, I am an instrument of my own devices. Okay. When she visited, the strangest feeling came over to me and I instantly felt cold, no matter how warm the day or evening was. And when she left, her smell, something like camphor and thyme, lingered for hours. It was an odour so odd, I just wanted to throw up. I did not like Lucy at all. When I looked down at her feet, the shoes she wore looked exactly the same as the ones my mother had owned, the same turquoise shoes Aunt Pearl had bought from England. The fixation of the shoes made it difficult for me to be nice to Lucy. And one day I just said to her, Where do you get those shoes from, Lucy? My cousin gave them to me. They're unusual colour. Of course they're unusual. I like unusual things. She brushed the thick hair out of her face. I was positive that the shoes she wore were my mother's. But how did she get them? My mind sank of the many horror stories I heard about the Kendall crash. Many of the dead and injured were robbed at the Kendall site. Was she one of the thieves? Wow. Powerful. Thank you for that. Thank you. Well, your your pen continues, and you've now um, um, you now have a new word with Dessa's Riveton that deals with your cultural rules. Tell us a little about this new work. Well, I as I said, I grew up in England. I went to England when I was three, and I grew up with my own biological family, and my neighbours was a Jew, were a Jewish family. And there were four women who didn't have any children. So I lived between the two homes. While my parents worked really long hours, I lived between, I lived in their home. They picked me up from school. They looked after me till my parents came home. And then I moved back to Jamaica when I was seven and lived in Jamaica for two years. Oh, I've missed a bit. When I was in London, I was bullied badly because I was the only black child in the entire school. And then I went to Jamaica. Mm. And I was bullied badly because I was the English girl with the English accent. <laughs> so, mm. so it's my life um, between the two cultures and between two countries. And it, it, I had a really rich, wonderful childhood. I got a little tired, not that I think it doesn't exist, but I got tired of hearing about the poverty of children, the rape, the incest of young girls. And not to take away from any of that that happens, but that wasn't my story. And I wanted to share a story that was different of a young girl growing up in a happy environment. And um, my Jewish family, I just lost my uncle, one of the men who was married to the women. He just died at 104. Mm. So I still have my mom. My mom is going to be 90 this year. And I still have a long relationship with the Jewish family, with their nephews and nieces. But I was a very loved child um, throughout my childhood. And the book stops when I'm 12, when I'm still safe. Nothing to okay. uh, <laughs> to censor. <laughs> Nothing to censor. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. We, we, within our culture, we need stories like that, that, that gives, uh, that it's not all pathology. How it, has it been received? The, the book um, won a prize last year for, um, it was for the library, I can't remember, the National Library in Jamaica, made it a summer wow. read for uh, the children in Jamaica. And then the other award, I read at Calabash, 
a literary festival in Jamaica in front of a thousand people. I was the opening author in 2014. And the book has sold extremely well. And this book also is on um, somebody's desk, somebody quite prominent, to actually make it into a musical, like Annie. Oh, neat. Please, yeah, tell us how so. do we get a copy of this work? <laughs> well, both books are on Amazon. I don't have any physical books at the moment. They're selling like crazy. I don't have any <laughs> physical books in my office where sometimes I say, oh, call me and I can give you an autographed copy. I don't have any books other than the Finding Mr. Right book. But people can go to Amazon and buy a copy of the book on Amazon. And go on, ahead and repeat both books. titles for us. Um, my the Kendall story is Reaper of Souls, a novel of the Kendall's 1957 Kendall crash. Um, the Bar Mitzvah Girl is it's Bar Mitzvah Girl, Memories of a Jamaican Child, and my first book, the handwriting book, is Finding Mr. Wright. Um, Boy, you and I'm currently working on a mystery now. I'm currently working on a mystery ah. novel. Yeah. Wow. Any time may, may on that? Or? Oh, it will be 2017 before it's finished. Um, but what I'm looking at is some of the fraud cases, money laundering, all the all the negative stuff that I look at and read. I'm trying to turn them into stories that in some way end with a happy ending. So, okay. yeah. So, I mean, my, my work is... is it's quite riveting when I look at some of the cases that I work on where people have forged money, changed somebody's will, stolen someone's land. Um, just a lot of interesting stories that I think would make a good read. A good read. Well, Beverly, we, I'd like to thank you for your genius and for um, using your pen to give us such uh, insights into the human condition. So as we close, do you, do you have a final um, word of wisdom for us? My word of wisdom is keep going no matter what. Just keep going. You, there's always going to be challenges. There's always going to be something that you think you can't do it right now because. But just keep going. Just keep your eye on the prize and keep going. Boy. Well said. <laughs> okay. And Thank, to learn more about to learn more about Chris Daly, visit digital two with that's the number two growmedia dot com. To learn more about Jamaican diaspora, visit Jamaican diaspora dot com. That's Jamaican with an N. And to learn more about Beverly East, visit Suspect Signatures dot com. We really appreciate you spending some time with us, Beverly. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Penny Saturday is starting Friday. That's right, Friday is the new Saturday. Rush into JC Penny to find select juniors and girls Arizona and Total Girl leggings for just five dollars. And guys, stay active with exertion shorts for only ten dollars. Plus, get an extra twenty percent off with your JC Penny credit card and coupon on select items, or an extra fifteen percent off with any other form of payment. Two days to find your stride. That's getting your pennies worth. JC Penny. Prices valid 826 to 827. Coupon required. Valid 824 to 828. Some exclusions apply. Twenty percent off for subject to credit approval. Check jcp.com or newspaper for coupon details. I figured out who the neighbor around the corner is. Oh, yeah? I like him a lot. Ooh. He lets me talk as much as I want, is very simple, and has great plans. <laughs> okay, I have to meet him. Sure. Say hi. This is Metro PCS. Metro PCS is in your neighborhood. Come say hi and get unlimited data, talk, and text for only $30, period. All on the fast nationwide 4G LTE T-Mobile network. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figure it out. Coverage not available in some areas. One gigabyte of high-speed data included. See store for details, terms, and conditions at data management info.